This program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Good morning everyone and a very warm welcome to you in the Masai Mara of Kenya. We have a lioness here and just slightly to right of it there's a, another male lion, Olalashi. Welcome aboard to your very own safari live from the African wilderness. Jumbo Jumbo everyone, welcome to the Masai Mara. My name is Tim, we have beautiful lion there. And behind camera we have Big James. She is one of the Lolo Pride lionesses and right there, there is Olalashi. Very, very nice and it seems like these two might be mating. Just happened to see them mating right now. It's beginning to rain and I'm sure they're going to shelter out. So mostly they might head to where there's a bush or maybe come to the road. But let's wait. Yesterday I saw Lulash and I thought he might be a lone ranger, but only to to find him mating with this lioness here. So I'm sure it's going to be a boom with lots of cubs in the near future. Because lots of lions actually are mating now which is going to be very, very nice to see. So yesterday we saw one of the river pride lionesses mating lion from the, from the marsh. His name is Kibogoyo. I'm just trying to identify that lioness. If maybe Big Jamie can just zoom in back to the lioness. I'm trying to identify that lioness. So as I try to ID because she's in the grass, let me take you over to another live location. Good morning everybody, welcome to Juma Private Game Reserve to your very own live safari from the African wildness. What a beautiful morning to start with the buffalo. My name is Andrew on, and Anil on a camera this morning. This is where we begin. Such a beautiful morning, kind of a cloudy with herds of buffalo sitting right. Looks like all get road blocked. For now, all just taking it easy. It's quite actually slightly cloud. Where the temperature is 21 degrees, 70 Fahrenheit. And this kind of a condition, most animals they are when it's like this, and then all animals love it to be part of a, you know, movement around here. So everyone, this, you're more than welcome to send your questions, kids questions at worldearth.tv or hashtag a wild earth at FC. This is how we're gonna be communicating or interacting through your questions. We'd love to hear from you. This is just uh, yeah, looking at us. 
It's not that we are threatened them. It's just so that, you know, they're all aware of any approach. So we came into this position where they were not really expecting. It's probably still quite a beautiful morning for them. And when we last saw their tracks yesterday morning, they were all headed south, away from Juma. We're still in Juma, which they came in. Juma man axis right now. This is the position of this animal. We haven't actually found out yet of what has been behind them. So let's take a moment of a silent to listen to the to the sound what's happening around this animal. Safari Kitty, you're right, I agree with you, you know, it's all beautiful, and all the change, the change that take place, and then it's a result of the little rain we have a few weeks ago, and you can't believe how much that little bit of, bit of a drizzling has made such a change like this. And as you can see now, we had this buffalo, you know, lying close to that road, but you know, it's quite easy for them to vanish. Just like that, because you know, the covered bushes has taken much of a space. It's not much uh, through gap we can look at them nicely. So I'm gonna leave this herd for now, and then probably behind them, I'm gonna follow slowly, see what's behind them. While I'm doing that, I'm gonna be taking you over another safari life. location probably about 800 meters as the crow flies from those buffalo good morning and welcome to this part of the sunrise safari here we have got a yellow billed hornbill eating some termites my name is james henry and is my winning morning smile and on camera today the not insubstantial form of herit let us go back to our hornbill who has now got a dirty beak and he's got a dirty beak because it's covered in mud. And it's covered in mud because he'd been digging for termites. Here's 
is now singing you a morning song. So what he's done is found some fresh excavations made by the termites, and he's picked away at it until he's got to the termites. Now what he's trying to do is get to that chimney there, because the chimney you can see behind has got a whole lot of termites in its opening. There we go. You may just be able to pick up the little red shapes of the termites. I mean, that is a great meal for him. He will be deeply satisfied. That's wonderful. And you can hear all around, of course, the sounds of the Cape turtle doves. You can hear another hornbill behind, possibly asking permission to come in here. I suspect that this chap would very jealously guard his little termite boon. Mm. He's got some nice big soldiers he's eating. I suspect a fair amount of soil is going down with them. Hmm. Yes, uh, Karen, the hornbill does look quite like a toucan in that it has a very long beak. I don't think they're very closely related. One coming from the Americas or the Western Hemisphere and the other from the East. And so although they're probably the evolutionary equivalent, um, they're not very closely related. Faskinarting. Okay, well, I think we'll probably carry on towards the north and see what we can pick up over there. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Unbound Pinda Private Game Reserve, where this morning we've managed to catch up with three of the six members that we saw yesterday. My name is Matt, and behind the camera we've got Craig. And we've come straight back to the area where we left them, and we've managed to find the three young males who, I'm assuming their their moms and, and maybe that male, were out, or are out, hunting this morning, in the cool of the morning. It is still relatively cool, the lions are lying out in the open. You can see the one in picture is two siblings have ventured a little bit further down into this little valley or, or drainage line and are both peering back up at this brother who's watching them quite intently. You can see those ear flicks already starting this morning. Lovely black tips behind their ears but with the sunlight we had this morning they almost stuck out like sore thumbs in this green grass. So it might be worth just sticking around a while and seeing if those older lionesses don't return and then lead them to something more exciting. We pointed out birds yesterday morning and just talking about the dawn chorus, one bird that's already started chirping or rattling away as the rattling's testicular and 
we sat here all afternoon and that's all we heard. I think there must have been about three or four of them just calling away. A little bit of a breeze starting to come through as well, but not quite as many clouds as we had yesterday. So I think today is going to be quite a, a hot day. So eventually, sometime this morning, I think these lines will all disappear, maybe down into that area. Below, you can see the couple of Egyptian geese. I'm not sure if you can hear them flying in the distance. So then all these lions were, were watching, twitching. But we drove past, went straight past, because they were hunting last night, drove past a watering hole, quite a prominent watering hole out here, to see if they wouldn't be lying there with fat bellies, but that wasn't the case. They actually haven't moved far at all. And again, maybe just inexperience here. The moms let them have their fun last night, attempting their hand at, or their paw, should I say rather, at at hunting unsuccessfully. And then the, this morning, I think the tomfoolery was enough for the older lionesses. So they kindly asked that these three stay behind so that they can, can go and do their, their business uninterrupted and see if they might catch something. Uh, I'm going to stick around here a little while longer and see if either they return or these youngsters get up and go potentially find them. Jumbo Jumbo everyone, another wonderful morning on the other side of the world from Southern Africa to here in the Masai Mara, Kenya and it is a beautiful morning. I've come across this giant quite a long ways he was in a haste walking towards me then all of a sudden I think he picked up a creeper or a type of grass then he decided to stop I was hoping he was gonna get here but looks like he has started to make his way towards me Jumbo everyone my name is Isaac and on camera we have Bungay our mission this morning is to look for elephants we have started with this lone male and hopefully we'll get to find some bigger herds and he looks very small from a distance, but he's gonna get very big as he, you know, he comes towards us. Yeah, these are breeding bulls. They don't need to be in company of anybody else. They can roam freely by themselves. When in must, they wander long distances. These guys are the ones that can move up to 50 kilometers in a week around here in the Mara. That means they can cross the river, they can go towards the Serengeti, they can come back in search of females in estrus. I can say he doesn't have a good set of tusks, but his age, he is a good, you know, over 35, I would say. And during this time, he's naturally a breeding machine they wait for a very long time before coming in you know to reach maturity where they start mating and so when they reach this stage they can stay in must or in breeding stage for up to one year it is our largest land mammal that we have here then followed by the hippo mostly they will roam but every now and then they'll stop to graze and browse. And I don't know what mission he's on. He's heading towards the forest. Maybe he has picked up some low frequencies sent by a female across the river. And maybe he wants to go across the other side, see if he, you know, he can find her. Remember to talk to us, hashtag Wild Earth. When your questions and comments are very, very welcome. It is a wonderful morning nice and cool not raining in my side of the mara yeah he's coming yeah well well i'm gonna stick here wait for him um see if he gets closer to me but i'm gonna stick here around here he looks like he might come Da 
Tatsi, thank you for your comment. <laughs> Beautiful elephant. He is uh, gorgeous indeed, making his way towards maybe some different kind of grazing from what he's been used to. Looks like he is on a mission. Normally, they don't walk that distance without stopping to really get serious with the grazing. So definitely, he is heading somewhere. Maybe he received an SMS to come this way. We are not, you know, there is no shortage of these big guys here in the Mara. There's quite a good number. And I think there are females coming into, you know, breeding, into airstress, because in the last five days, I've seen some very big new males. So it means definitely they are coming into season. After a good, uh, some good rains, so there's been plenty of browse and grass. And I think that is what stimulates life here, is the availability of food. And that makes everybody happy, making these guys appear after a very long break, being out of the conservancy to other conservancies or heading towards the human habitated areas. There are some big forests there. They do go there. And I think you now they are back now. It looks like he was going to cross the road somewhere down. So I'm going to reposition as he heads down so that we can see him come across. Definitely, he's going towards the river. There is a small marsh behind me, and that's where I think he's going to start and then head towards the river. So I'm going to turn around quickly. So he's coming right here. Sassy, um, are males, you know, ele male elephants always alone? Not always. They sometimes uh, join up in big, uh, big herds of bachelor boys up to 18 to 20, and then and then you know they will break up after a while when the one finds a female, they will break up and you know, form small groups or they will break up to go and mate with that lone female. So they are not always alone, but this is a stage where this male has become very active and so he's heading towards... Well, it is after maturity, which is past the age of 30, they will stay in mast for up to one year. And after that, they might stay without coming into season for another, you know, maybe one year. So every other year, they will come into season. Here he comes. He's got no worry in the world. Nothing worries him this time. And at his age, he's not worried about anything about, but, but from a man with a gun would worry him. Well, looks like he's gonna head his way and I'm gonna let him do that. And while we do that, let's take you to another live location. Beautiful, such a wonderful following elephant and not far since we were following this herd of buffalo see what could be behind them with this leopard she was actually not behind them it looks like they just walk past her in this very slightly tall mound over here it looks like our prince is Columba, i think and it's so one minute it was very amazing how she was just lying flat in that mound right to the top and then we were busy you know looking at the buffalo see how they are and you know, probably all over 
across this road where we're at and eventually uh, just spot the tail because usually the tail is more white and then end and then this is how we find her but looks like this herd of buffalo they didn't even notice that she's there otherwise they'll chase her right up but it's so cool you know that spot pattern also um, it develops a lot of world world camouflage and they will blend in understand this mound is clearly different to her color but at least it's something if that animal was purely gold without this spot pattern probably the buffalo would spot her just not kind of 100 percent sure looks like since she had a kill yesterday i think not far from here on via teleaxis and the hyena took it i'm not sure maybe that meat was not up in a tree yeah that's usually happen as a hyena they always follow a cat scent and then eventually when they kill something and then immediately respond to that. There was another female track up in the western boundary and the other guards were following him up. But, you know, it was also coming this direction. So I'm not sure which one that could be. Maybe it's... Shindulu. That would make sense. Thanks so much, everyone. And oh, well, probably the same tracks the guys were following up there. And then from the eastern side of us, there's all Kuru barking. And the gems is having a look along Galago shortcut. That probably maybe is Tolamba up there. Probably still kind of very much in this area, but sadly that uh, one of her cub got killed. I'm not sure what happened to the other, but she won't. She would just kind of move around in in this area, in and out. She was eventually going to forget what happened, but she probably witnessed a lot of that. Because they learn so much and they learn from their mother and of course when they grow up they keep it on their mind and never forget what the danger is like. So I'm going to sit, sit in this position and see what this cat's doing. I'm going to take you over another live guide. The things that you always want to show somebody but uh, often are not able to. It is the Bennett's woodpecker and the standard line when you see a Bennett's woodpecker or hear one is that they feed on the ground or often feed on the ground and you actually seldom see them feeding on the ground and here is one hopping about as though it is a I don't know a little curricum thrush and what it's doing is picking up ants from ant nests that's a really really cool sighting of a Bennett's woodpecker one of four woodpecker species that we see here. And now he has gone to sit in a tree. Now we've come down to the area quite close to camp because Andrew, from where he's sitting with that leopard now, can hear or ha did hear some kudus alarm calling. So we're just doing a little search around here. I was quite far away, however, when he heard it, and so I'm not entirely sure where those kudus are. Well, well, from Prejudice to another large habivore that we have here in the Mara, 
he is out and about and definitely he is a male. The other ones that sometimes are always out late. This situation can be very dangerous because this is an animal with a natural pure aggressiveness and it cannot be provoked. Good thing is he is heading away from us and quite a distance away. You find them like this when they find, you know, um, semi-permanent waters and they want to reside there. But eventually, sometimes the water runs off or it dries up, get drunk up and dries up due to evaporation. And so it makes them wander around trying to find a new puddle. Sometimes they'll head back to the river. The main reason he's out and this far is competition can get very stiff at the river. Uh, the main male doesn't tolerate other boys when there's a female in season. And so to avoid conflict, they break away, especially if they are lower ranking. They break away and they find themselves out in the open like this. He can't stay out for long because when the sun comes out, it can get too hot, which could, you know, lead to dehydration where he gets too much sunburn. So he was going to find some time, a place later on. But definitely you can say that, tell, tell, you know, he's got a wound at the back there. That could have been a warning from the main male and so he decided I better get out of the river. It's very swampy where he is. You could see him, you know, a little bit sinking every now and then. Their big feet allows them to sometimes, you know, somehow wade through easily. If they were pointed, it would be very difficult for them to get in and out. And also they're nice and short, so they don't have to pull, you know, them you know, out too far. He is listening to me. Yes, he is listening to me. A magic ninja. Thank you for your beautiful um, comment. Yes, um, I didn't get all of it, but definitely, you know, thank you for your comment. So they are beautiful creatures when they're out and always nice to see them out. You, you know, we've been very fortunate to see this kind of situation where they are roaming freely out of water most of the time. And you can't get very disappointed when you're really wanting to look for a hippo on safari. You always see their heads and back. So it is a added bonus for us to bring you this live safari with them out of the water. Of course, it's very early here. The sun is not out, it was drizzling. So it's a perfect situation, you know, for for hippos to be out of water. Where he's, he is, the grass is so soft, I think he doesn't need even to chew, he just swallows it whole. And these are eating machines. Oh, that is a uh, fiscal shrike, common fiscal shrike, the small bird over there. He just wanted to be talked about, so it's a common fiscal strike. Hence its name, it feeds on small insects, spiders, grasshoppers, dragonflies, you name them. And they do sometimes hang them in thorns, thorny bushes like butchers do. And that's why they're called the butcher bird, the family of butcher bird. Behind there's a tiny little one. I think it's a cysty collar. I cannot tell exactly which one. It will be one of the sister callers. Well, I'm going to move on, try and find more elephants. Let's take you to a li another live location. A very good morning to all our viewers and welcome to the Timbavati Riverbed on and beyond Ngala, where this morning we are looking at two big male and yalas, and they're currently having a bit of a standoff. We can see the hair on the back raised, and then, oh yes, and we've got the own behind the camera. <laughs> Myself, I'm Yapi. Um, and this is quite an interesting scene. This is, for one, we don't often see 
And you all are here, except in the camps. This is a very dense section of the riverbed. And the road that we're on is not far from the bed itself. You can see the head of the one in Yala facing in one direction, and then the one at the back is facing in a different direction. And he's slowly moving now. Very, very, very subtle, very, very slow movements. They're also carefully watching every single move of the other animal. Just have a look at that leg. See the back leg following. And there you can clearly see the crest of hair up on the back. Now these animals lift them up. Mm. That way they make themselves, or at least their outline, look slightly bigger. And it looks like that one's moving off, and this one's still standing his ground. And I actually thought the other one looked slightly larger from where I'm sitting. I think these two are very, very evenly matched. Now what's interesting is, this is usually the first way to resolve any sort of a issue that they might have with each other. Now I do think that was quite a tense moment and it's probably taken a little bit of effort from both. Darcy, I also like the slow motion walk. It's like a bit of a dance, as you can see. A standoff in dancing, although it's not with extreme activity. And let's see what this one does. <laughs> Saw the back right leg move slowly. So they arch their back, they make themselves look bigger, and generally the smaller one will usually back off. But in this case, these two actually look pretty similar in size. Now, I wonder if that is an indication that this one has actually worn that stand off or not. The other one somewhere in there. Now, I've never, I've only ever seen Nyala bulls fight once where it was a serious fight. And usually when they are very evenly matched in terms of size, that's what they might do. And they might try and resolve it through going to the old fashioned physical contact. Looks a little bit traumatized almost. You can see now the movements are quickening up. He's still looking at the other one. Ooh, actually Owen's just pointing out there is a cut on the side of his cheek. And the only thing that I can think is that must have been from the horns of the other one. Maybe they did actually have a face off. You can see he's still got his the crest on his back raised, which means that he is still having that adrenaline pump through him. The other one has indeed moved off now. Now we don't often see there's a lot of vinyalas in the camp which is not actually too far from where we are. And we don't often see the bulls around. But usually when they do come in, then we know that they might try and mate with the females. And I guess 
at this time, these two were probably both moving into the area and they encountered each other and there was no other way than to resolve this properly and establish who would have the higher rank and the first rights to the female. Cheeks, yes, there is indeed an actual name for this type of standoff, and it is called lateral display. Now you do see this happening with quite a number of different animals, especially animals within this family, the kudu, the bushbuck. So now this one's come back. And it looks like they're not done yet. You can see, even though he looks like he's looking at the camera, an antelope like this has brilliant peripheral vision. And he's actually sizing the other guy up. Maybe they're just maneuvering in a slightly larger circle due to the fact that it's a, quite a tricky spot. I can imagine to be moving quickly and having to use their horns to fight. It's amazing how well they blend in, and I think we would be, look at them carefully placing the foot there through the thick vegetation. Dizzy, if I got your question correctly, do they actually get more aggressive than bad heads, and when? I guess in this case we're going to have to see. Normally with a situation like this one has to have a lot of patience. The one's already got the blood on the side of the cheek, so I think they did actually... ...went all the way to actually butt heads. To be honest, but looking at an Nyala coming like that through the thick bush, even myself, I'll be a little bit intimidated. He looks like he means business, and this is not a normal casual gait that he's got. So he's slowly moving over to the other one. He's constantly keeping an eye on him. That's why he's got his head low down, just in case something does change. Also, it makes his back look higher. I heard that some of our viewers are thinking that we are filming in slow motion. We're actually not. If you do listen to the birds calling in the background, <laughs> you'll hear that they're not calling in slow motion. And now we're pretty much back where we started. With that careful circling motion, they've moved around. <laughs> they've switched positions, actually. Ruth, this is incredibly dramatic. I agree with you. Dinyala, I guess, is a very dramatic animal. But like I said earlier, these things do take a lot of time and it's very tough to say that if they actually gonna get to the point to clash with their horns again. Louis, 
I don't know if they had their own sound effects, if they actually come to a clash. I guess everything will have to remain to be seen. But I think maybe at the start, when they realized that neither's backing off, they did attempt, or well, they did clash with each other and then moved off. And I think now that impact might have had them to back off a little bit. Harvey, what size do Nyala's grow into? This is about as big as Nyala bulls get. And the bulls are slightly larger than the females. The exact measurements of shoulder height, I am not too sure of at this moment. And I'm going to have to go and make sure about that. But these are two mature, sexually mature males. Out of all the other males in the area, these two are more than likely much higher ranked. And that's why we see them in this situation. Now, if I'm not mistaken, that one just started feeding. Maybe that's a little nervous nibble. Enthusiastically dawn. Will they kill each other? I really do not know. I do know that they are very capable of, and in some of these clashes in an extreme case, the antelopes do damage the other to the point where they might either suffer from their injuries at a later stage, or they might even die within the fight. You can see that one's starting to groom again. Maybe he's relaxing down. Well, I can see the other one is most definitely not showing the same state of relaxation. The hair on his back is still very much erect and he's still <laughs> moving in slow motion. Black Widow Spider, usually when they start to fight, then that's when we turn the slow motion off and then everything goes back to normal speed for dramatic effect. But they don't actually fight in slow motion. This is, in fact, the whole display that we're seeing here is to avoid the actual fight. It's quite interesting that animals are adapted that way. It's almost as if they are not... ...not aiming to get to the point where they have to fight each other or injure each other. I see that one's also going back into... ...its slow display. And they're not far from where the river bank is on that side. And it would be interesting to see if they might actually move down to a slightly more open spot. And I think what we'll do is we'll remain here for now to see how this epic battle plays out. what I have here and uh, yeah lionesses these are from the river pride 
Um, I have all of them here. That is half tail. She misses the last bit of her tail. I know her like that. I don't see Maskeo. She's the one with the floppy ear. Um, I don't see her here. There are normally four. These are the ones with the seven cubs. But there are no cubs here. Maybe Maskeo is back looking after the cubbies. They could be somewhere you know, around here. I'm still looking forward to meeting and saying hello to all of them. But these girls look very, very, very hungry. I found them about 10 minutes ago and they seem to be desperate looking around. Remember, they're very, very good hunters. They don't hesitate to go for anything from wildebeest to zebra or even buffalo and looks like they want to get up it's a bit chilly and also it's drizzling still very perfect for them to be you know hunting good conditions the problem is there isn't much and anything that appear, that will appear here it will be in big big trouble these are cats meant to kill and anything moving they will go for it they are, you can tell their bodies they are very big these girls so they are not in here for a joke they will go for anything even a young buffalo they will go even a fully grown buffalo these three girls will be for you know can be forced to get one with three of them together they are able to tire it and even bring it down that is bonding or socializing <coughs> typical with cats after eating or before going for a hunt or when resting they do rub heads lick each other that's making sure that their regional scent is spread out shriat how do we identify different prides uh, well we can identify because of the areas. And not only that, some females have got um, unique characters and markings. Like this girl walking towards us, you can tell that her ear on the right, it's rather, no, not that this one here. Let's have a look at her ears. She's gonna use this vantage point to have a look so they have unique features uh, this one doesn't have very but you know where you find them you will find you know either four or five or six or seven you know that this area we normally find six or seven females and then there is one specifically that you can tell like the one to the right here she's got a bit of her tail missing that's how we identify them. And also by the males that dominate them, we also can identify who they are. But they are distinct marks like that female to the far, farthest there to the left, her ear. Look at that. Nobody else has got that mark. It's unique to that lioness. And so we can always say she's got a notch on her ear left ear and that's how we identify her you see that that is not man-made it is natural and it's very different from any other lioness those eyes are penetrating they can you know they look like they're not wide open but i tell you they are looking quite far distance to find something these three girls need something like 100 kilos of meat uh, to be able to satisfy them and to keep them going. So I'm gonna stick here with them for a little bit longer. Good morning, good morning everyone. 
It is a beautiful morning here in Tualu Kalahari. Nice and cold. We had a little bit of rain last night. It's still raining in certain parts of the reserve. We're actually dodging the storm a little bit to a certain extent. Um, we are looking for lions this morning. So initially we got in here and started looking for some tracks. Unfortunately, they rain dead. By the way, guys, my name is Moritz. Behind the camera, we've got David. Um, so yeah, struggling to, to get to fresh tracks at the moment just because of the rain during the early hours of the morning. Um, however, we do think we've picked up on tracks from just before the rain uh, of the pride with the cubs. So we're trying to follow up and see if they didn't cross over the road somewhere where it's a little fresher so that we can continue following up on that. Um, but yeah, exciting times now that the rains are back. We're all very happy about that. So um, we are going to continue trying to pick up on these tracks, dodging the storm, and if we do find something, we'll let you know. So, the tension has eased a little bit here on the bank of the Timbavati, where that male, which seems to be the larger out of the two, if I look at his horns, at least, in terms of physical size, they seem very, very similar. These uh, seem to ease down a little bit. He started to feed his... crest on his back still up, and he's still looking around and keeping a constant eye on the other one. It doesn't seem so intensely locked in the standoff that we saw earlier. Darcy, that's a very good question. Are Nyala's the slowest runners out of all the antelope? I don't actually know. I do know that Nyalas tend to move in dense areas, so they don't really move so quickly, and they often have to duck quite a bit to move through the thick bush. They're not really developed as runners as such. You can see that one's busy horning the bush in front of him. Ah. Uh, we often get the questions, do they actually mark? And do territorial markings? In this case, I think he is just maybe releasing some of the tension. And it's also an indication that he does have that horns. He is willing to use it. Now this one, throughout the whole time, has seemed a little bit more concerned about the situation. And it might be that he's got a little bit lack, less experience than the other guy, but you can see the crest on his back has now gone down completely. See, he's still looking in the direction of the other one. So I think we'll still sit here and see for a little while longer what's going to happen. Beautiful. We still have our beautiful uh, Ashdulu right in front of our vehicle. So she's highly mobile now south from that last position we were at. It's probably, this is all about hunting. Now she climb mounds and go into this very covered area. So, but we're still trying to keep up with her. So we'll see how far she's gonna lead us into. 
but it's still far from the western boundary, so she's heading directly south from from here. So there's three vehicles in this side, and we're all trying to keep the same sighting available. So I'm going to reverse, I'm going to keep up with her. out on a mission maybe who wants to hunt but back here you know, the lions are still sleeping just made it the second or the third time so we're still waiting for a couple more minutes for them to do it again so yesterday we saw one of the marsh pride lions mating with one of the river pride lionesses so this morning this female there who I'm trying to identify I don't want to speculate yet because if I'm sure yet I'm going to let you know but looks like one of the lioness from Ololo Pride because this is Ololo area and that is Ololashe so I think after a little while when she wakes up I very much identify her and be able to tell you who she is A very quiet morning it's been it's been raining a little bit so that will make most of the lands crowd somewhere for shade and for for actually warmth so I think these two here are going to take time maybe it, it looks like it just began because it's still very very active so I think it's going to take more than about three three days almost four days so I think We'll be having more mating soon, so I'm going to stick here for a little while to see what's going to happen. It looks like Olalashe keeps on looking because the lions from the marsh area are around and that can be intimidating to him. But good thing there's a lioness that they're mating over there, so that will keep them from coming to this area. But sometimes when lions patrol, their territories or maybe want to conquer territory they might happen to bump into lone lions like Olalashe and that will not be nice it's a good thing that they only ate about two days ago and it was a very big meal we saw these lions spend about four days in the thicket. I think they might have killed a buffalo, maybe a big giraffe, because normally you find a big pride of lion staying in a certain spot for long. It only happens to be a very big meal. So I'm sure it's going to be energetic for the rest of the four days that is going to be mating thanks to the very good meal. relaxed look at how he's turning back 
exposing his stomach for some breeze. Very, very nice. As I wait here, watching these two, let me take you over to another live location. Well, not very flat lines of mine over here. Looks like this girl is desperately scanning and trying to find anything that is edible from a distance. Her keen sense of eyesight helps her see quite a long way and she has picked up something maybe very alert now. Concentration. Trying to make sure what she sees is right and it's in a good position for her to go hunting so she's up it is not easy being a lion or a lioness here or basically being a predator it is super tough it's not a walk in the park this is a place you earn to live survival is very tough during the migration when the big herds are here these girls can be guaranteed a meal almost every other day we have a movement she's just gone right behind our car i don't know if we will, if we will have a hunt or not but she is on a hunt. So back to our lion. Seems like he's still enjoying that breeze. Look at how he's lifting his leg up very nice position you can tell all these lions enjoy sleeping out in the open they're the apex predator so they're not afraid of anything at all oh it seemed like a yoga morning for these two you can see how she's breathing heavily I'm sure if, when temperatures rise during the day, they're going to pick a spot where they're going to, to rest. But sometimes when lions are mating, you see, the, the male lion always get the females not to wander off from their presence or from their vicinity. So they always get them. And I'm sure he'll not want her to walk away. So they always keep them close to them. If it, if it means being in the open like this. We've seen a very different behavior in lions in mating here. We've seen about four of the lionesses from the Ololo Pride mating and I think it's gone on for more than expected. So previously Ololashi was mating two, one with the collar and, the, and the, another sister who is a little bit blondy. Funny thing, it took about eight days for them to mate as compared to when we know of lions mating for about three to four days. So sometimes you know, lions can play what you call false istras. I'm not sure if that is what was happening, but it seems like one of the lionesses from this pride 
has a calf, Bahati. So I'm not sure if this is the mother, but I'm waiting here to very much identify so I can be able to tell. A few days ago, I saw Blob Bob Marley or Split Nose. He was walking towards this territory and I think he was following some scent trail. Not quite sure where he went to, but it'll be nice to see if he's going to be around. The lush being here, so I hope there's not going to be a clash. So let's wait and see what these two will do as I take you over to another live location. Okay, so speaking about clashes, um, we're hoping that these guys are also able to keep their kill and the other, the, the larger individuals of the Southern Pride won't be able to locate it. Luckily for them, they have a cool, windy and wet day ahead of them. So that'll mask the scent to a certain extent, as you can see over there. These three young females have killed a blue wildebeest. I'm not sure about the size of the wildebeest yet or the um, gender, but it, by the looks of it, it might be an adult male. But yeah, very happy to have come across these little rascals. Uh, I haven't seen them in a while, so it's good to see that they're doing good all by themselves. Um, these were the three that used to operate with the female the southern pride female that had her had the cubs first so now that the females with the cubs have joined up these guys have been sort of i wouldn't say kicked out but just pushed away for a little while i think until the youngest cubs are a little older but as you can see in very good condition and it's quite positive to see that these three these three young females are, um, are doing so well and hunting so well already. I mean, they're the future of Tswalu, so if they are already making kills on such a frequent basis by themselves, that's a very positive thing, especially for one day when they are supposed to raise cubs of their own. There's a couple of jackals squirreling around here. Um, I'm only seeing the one at the moment, but we, we actually found these lions by looking at a jackal and which direction it was moving. So, thank you for the jackals for finding, the, finding us these lions or showing us these lions. They're quite brave, this one. He's about 30 meters away from the kill and coming closer. Uh, luckily, none of the lions have seen or became aware, become aware of him. But yeah, perfect conditions for lions to hunt in, guys. Well, predators in general. When it's cool and windy, and even when it's raining as well, um, it's the ideal conditions for them to be operating in. Just because, you know, their scent is masked, their um, sound that they create gets taken away by the strong wind, and then there's always the coolness, temperature-wise now, that helps them to travel more energy efficiently. So, absolutely ideal conditions. You can see this one female has now seen this jackal coming closer. I don't think he knows that he's walking closer to the one female. He's got eyes only for the carcass. There he goes. Okay, now he's turning. <laughs> Always amazes me at how brave they are. Well, or just intelligent to know how close exactly they can come. Luckily for them, these lions have filled their bellies already, so they're not going to be 
the most active of lions at the moment. They're not going to want to necessarily give chase after a jackal just because he gets too close. They know that he won't ever take a chance while they're at the kill. But yeah, this was a, a very nice surprise to come around the corner and, you know, be following jackal tracks and then all of a sudden bump into these guys. I mean, obviously, we were looking for the lions, but it was different lions that we were following, actually, on the tracks, the ones that I told you about the, from just before the rain. There, we could see that the cubs were present. So they might still be just in the block here in between us and the kill at the moment. So Girl on Fire just had a question. How many in total in the Southern Pride? Um, okay, so currently we've got these three females that are definitely going to, well, in my opinion, join back up with the original Southern Pride when the cubs are a little larger. Sorry about that, Zwalu. Um we still got our beautiful female. Uh, she do lose, she's sitting right there. Um, I can tell you it was not actually easy, you know, following her when she was foraging through, through this very thicket over here. But eventually she come to slightly open where she's now on top of a very dried merula tree, fallen tree. But this is skinning around. The cloud give her a lot of a chance. It's still quite early for them to be able to give up hunting, so they will probably still push. We saw her scent marking over and over as she's moving, so she's doing both hunting and territorial communication. Turning around again. Getting up. We've seen her approach quite a lot of these dense bushes, but when she does that, she does it carefully because maybe she knew that all along, or she's capable of success in terms of hunting or usually baby antelope will be left behind in this thicket lying there while the mother's gone and I mean probably feeding see an impala around here yeah, or anything but she knew what she's actually capable of but let's just take a moment listen what she could hear as well to the shore um he's probably hosanna is probably still alive but we haven't heard from him since he went west i know the last location of him was uh, i think west part of this area which is an elephant plain that area but then there is no update but i believe he might be still alive i think he would we have any probably news if it's anything happened bad to him but i believe he's still all uh, right so I'm staying around with this cat, taking you over another guide. Well, great weather for hunting. Indeed, we have great weather here also. 
and the three lionesses picked up a warthog and it's walking somewhere in the long grass there you see it to the right of the screen it's over there walking in the long grass but there is a lioness not very far from her to the right she's gonna come into picture soon it's somewhere there there it is you can see the small head to the right of the screen so they are stalking this warthog they've tried to flank it there is one off to the right there is one following her from be you know from behind and then there is another one off to my left it's coming towards me and i'm a very long way so this is a hunt about to happen it can get very exciting but remember as always they have a very you know small percentage lion success rate so oh here comes another warthog what's gonna happen here the lioness to the right is going more to the right which is a good strategy the you know you see her there she's going off to the right making sure that she's not seen and now with two warthogs chances of them getting one increase especially when the two warthogs find each other they might want to say hello pass one two words before going their own ways and that could add to the advantage of the lions or the lionesses yeah i see the one warthog there the dark spot in the middle it's quite a long way and there is this warthog yeah let's see no i don't know which one you're gonna show us uh, this one here might get lucky oh they're coming together look at that like i said and there is a lioness uh, looking at them you see i don't know if they will like each other the warthogs let's see okay looks like they're also look at this this is the mystic they're going to do they're two young males and they want to head back one another oh dear okay that's the lioness watching them from a distance calculating looking at her sister saying you know maybe you should be the one moving in okay this is where you say tomorrow i wish they knew you know the playing cost their lives okay they're really busy well, she's looking off to the right the lioness sorry i'm talking on behalf of her where she is when i say right it means she's facing me so she's looking to the right do we see the other female bungay where is she i don't see her anywhere there she's not anywhere remember they can really crouch down and crawl on their bellies making them almost invisible in this long grass look at these guys the mystic that cost their lives maybe the lioness in the middle is where she wants to move in okay now look at this oh dear she's moving in okay guys you know what caused their lives they forgot to pay attention yeah there are two boys who are squaring off and they don't know the dangers lacking well warthogs provides a very high percentage or a huge percentage of land meals after all the other prey has left and they're very you know tough it's, they don't go down easy they squeal and fight but with three lionesses these two youngsters have got no chance it's not easy being a lion so when a chance like this prevails itself you take a full advantage of it i don't know where the other lioness is just enjoy that while i try and find the other lioness to the right i don't see her yet i'm using oh here she is here she is off to the right near the tree here bungay left 
left, left a little bit. There she is. She's coming. She's left a little bit. Left a little bit. A little bit left. She's to the left. Somewhere there. There she is. There she's coming. So she's the closest one to the warthogs. So these warthogs have been cornered. If I was another lioness, I would be on this side and waiting for them to run this way. They are on the same frame, so it means that she is really, really close. So remember, the other one is behind them. This one is off to the left, and there's another one to the right. This increases the chances of them getting one. Their poor percentage here might go up. Okay, within range now. The other lionesses, the other lioness, you can see her. Okay, off, 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 off. Anything like me? Where is the other lioness? Lucky warthogs. They manage to outsmart the lionesses, and it's another fail. They have managed to outdo the lionesses. And like I said, it is not always perfect for them. They make just one mistake and their cover is blown out. Warthogs are very fast and they will run without stopping. Well, well, let me take you to another exciting live location. We've got Mulwati, the male leopard here. He's hunting. Also, we think warthogs. We had a very nice view of him, but unfortunately, he's now moved. There he is. He's just moving out. And this is another leopard. Hang on a second. Let me just go around. Stay with me. Now, there he is. He's moving. He's been relatively relaxed because Abel, who found him, has been able to stay quite far away. There's a warthog. The warthog straight in front of us. And the leopard is stalking that warthog. Now the only... Can you see the warthog? Gert? Yeah, uh, he's just in front of the bush there. Let's just wait here. The only other time I've seen Mulwati in the day has been when he was attached to the throat of a boar warthog. That is a big warthog. The leopard is right in here. I think we need to just sit tight briefly. I'm just, I can sneak slightly forward. Then we're just going to wait. Because if the leopard's... Listen, you got him. Oh, he's right here. There's the leopard. No doubt right behind a bush for you. There you got some spots. It is exciting to have yet another warthog hunt. Not so much for the warthog, obviously. For the warthog, it's not exciting at all, but indeed a terrifying experience. I'm sure it doesn't realize it's being hunted. <laughs> I've got Gerrit in a most beautiful position here, haven't I? Do you think if I back up slightly? I mean, I've got a perfect view where I'm sitting. I'm just going to go... There we go. Now the cat's gone behind a tree. But you see, even though he's not a leopard that likes to be around vehicles, every time I start the engine, he uses the sound to mask his approach. Yeah, 
he's nice and chilled, you know, relatively, compared with his normal see a car and run for the hills approach to life. Now what we don't want to do is get too close to either him or the pig because either we know how skittish the pigs are here for human beings. Yeah, they've got him behind us, they can see him. So let's go and let's back up slightly. I don't want to go forward because the warthog is there and if I go forward, the warthog will just increase distance slowly to get away from us. So we'll just stay on this side of the leopard. I was chatting yesterday with Morgan about Tingana's approach to life. And Tingana, of course, is another male leopard that we see. And Mulwati, the black widow spider, is about eight, I think. We think he's about eight. And around about this age, it's not surprising to find a, a leopard hunting water dogs. But once they get to around I think Tingana stopped hunting warthogs when he was about 10. And I think it was a wise move because it's dangerous. And I think that Hukumuri is a good example of how dangerous it can be to hunt pigs as a male leopard. Because we think that he could easily have lost that eye, the sight and that eye to a warthog hunt. And Tingana, who is probably the most successful leopard male that we have seen here is now 14 and you won't find him messing around with big ball warthogs. So they've got him just up ahead. James, good luck there with the Mulawati, the male. We here still have a Shdulu, female. She's just now climbed that tree, Marula tree, with a impala on a far distance, which she's, as you can see, how she's busy scanning around, but she's so impala there. And it was amazing of how she was looking at them, also she was looking at this tree over here and she managed to get up there safely and they didn't actually spot her which is is a good thing maybe her aim is that she just want to see how they react they're probably sometimes going to feed towards her or they're going to move away from her we don't have a visual of them now they're far from us but she saw them she spot them already so she's probably going to going to keep an eye on them if they move away, disappear, then I think she's going to go down. You can tell that she's an experience. A leopard that she don't actually only focusing on that direction of Impala, but for looking somewhere else. She probably not know, know that. Maybe the impala they could be scattered all over. Then she just the uh, position of herself.
it's so comfortable where she is right now, as you can see that the branches are just straight level. And then she lies comfortable. And she has a little bit of kind of support. That tree grows slightly upwards. That's where she put her head in. So we're gonna go. We're gonna, I'm gonna go. We're gonna go to um, a moment of a silence. Looks like Paula also giving alarm calls slightly. Let's hear what's going on. So it's all just gone quiet, but it's such a beautiful... Consulting detective, you're very right. I agree, Lou, that branch is, she's at more especially. It just looked like it's a very good spot for her to choose to be. As you can see, her head slightly get support from that tree since this little curved up a bit then she able to rest her head but she's not actually stopping looking around here she's probably gonna go down again can you hear impalas again in the background So right up there, it gives them a lot of... Okay, good morning. Welcome to your very lovely show. This morning you want to know you know, how, how strong is a bite force for leopard. So a leopard, they are, I would say, they're kind of like medium cats. I mean... There is a small cat, which is a, a sable in this caracol, but a leopard bite force. It's actually, you know, it's strong enough, but cannot be stronger than a lion or hyena, of course. But, you know, it, I'm kind of not sure with the kind of like speed ones, but, you know, it's, it's actually very strong enough to be able to hold down a prey, especially when it does not suffocation. So the reason I'm saying it's not strong than the hyena or the lion, when you see lion and leopard kill the warthog, which warthog you see, their throat, it's very much covered with a lot of muscles. They don't have actually a very good neck, very short neck. Find it very hard for leopard to able to get hold of a neck or the throat to able to suffocate or airway. So that's why sometimes it takes a while for that warthog to die. All you hear it's a lot of a squealing in there, so but the very sharpening teeth they get, you know, they do a lot of damage. And it's for sometimes. So yeah, I just confirm that a uh, leopard spite force is ninety-eight. So that's pretty much strong if we want to compare it to a small cat like this. And uh, for the lines, it could be around 112 by its force. But also, you know, it's, if you look at that line's size, it's pretty good and actually good size for such an animal like that to be, have kind of bite force. 
that height. But even though it's not even stronger than a hyena. So she's still keeping, she probably may also fallen asleep while she's trying to understand this group of impalas, what they're doing there. They often do that. They have a lot of a passion that they're just kind of animal that have a lot of time, their own time, to wait until there's a great chance for them to be able to act on whatever it is in front of them. She's at its marula tree, which is very f much favorite for most leopards. It's quite easy for them to get up. Some trees, some trees, the marula species trees, they find they're very straight up. Fog only started from above three meter, but this one so cool that no fog is anything from two and a half meter up. So, Neil and I, we're going to stay here while we're taking you over another live guide. Well, from Sidulu to the river lionesses, and they have decided to have a crash meeting. An emergency meeting all together. They've huddled up there. Remember, it's chilly, sort of drizzling. It was perfect. Everything was perfect. I don't know if one of them got excited and started running before the others got too close, and that's how they missed their hunt. And now regaining their energy. I'm glad they got, you know, they got to stay so that you could see where they are because otherwise it would be very difficult for me to try and say that's a lion or lioness. And so after a failed hunt, if there is nothing much, it is normal for lionesses to regroup and just slip like what they've done right now. It's like regaining a little bit of energy before strategizing and going back out again. It is essential because when they lie down like that, something else might come to this area after whatever they were going for, you know, heads away, something might come down and so they can start another hunt. What I will do is I'll continue on myself and see what I can find because now they are fast asleep. I don't know how much longer they will stay there and there's always something else to find. So the best thing for me is to find that. These girls, they are very hungry and so they will be trying almost the whole day. Let me continue on and let's find out what's going on somewhere else. Great, Isaac, good luck. Shidula also hasn't yet started to move. She's still busy scanning around from that height. And then I can hear the other guys because we're actually standing by on the other side. The other side is very open where there's Impala is. She wasn't going to just show up there easily. And she knew that every time she got close there enough to them, they're going to maybe move into very much immediately of the open area. And for her to be able to hunt is not great. Leopards are, they hunt very successfully in their thicket. They mean to be in a very thicket area. But sometimes the way she look around and since that impala was giving a little bit of alarm call, 
she probably maybe uh, we're not sure what's happening yet we found out you know it could be maybe two different cats hunting the same prey species but then all know that so every time they take their own time and listening if these impalas give alarm call non-stop and she will be also worried too much maybe another cat can be around what that cat could be lions or another leopard Sorry about that. Uh, two vehicles that approached this sighting. Jeremiah, you're right. And she actually even feel at home. True, I mean, this is where she they roam around here, yeah, her territory, patrol, and she's right in the middle. Uh, actually, Western Boundary is not far since we follow her through, but she was leading south, eventually slightly west. And the Western Boundary, if she's going to continue again west, she'll probably, she's probably going to cross to the west. And this is where she spent a lot of time there. And sometimes when there's nobody find her tracks crossing over east. And we won't know until we found out or we pick her up just like this morning. Beautiful tail. Look at that. The tail actually play an important role. They use it for a warning. If they warn anything, they're not happy about. Sometimes when they're leading cub away, they all follow the tail. Sometimes they hold it up, play around it. And it's so smooth for the cub to be able to play that, I mean, with it. They don't really actually, you know, do a you know a serious bite but you know they're just playing you know exercising their mouth but yeah most cats when they're not happy when they have a tail it's so important that you're able to tell rather than just looking at their face what they like but also looking at the tail even when they're interested on something they want to hunt the tail goes low, slightly down, and swing them sideways. But it's curl up to the end, so this is where you know for sure there is something that cat's seen. has and um, no she will probably climb down um, unless if it's an emergency where she get attacked by another big cat she will probably maybe uh, yeah go up if she decided to get down immediately she will jump that far down well it's probably like what four meter height or three and a half meter height can can put around there but, you know, for her, if she's going to hunt anything right now, she will move slowly down to that fog of that tree. And then from there, she's just going to go down, but very smooth. i seen a leopard fall from that, even more than that height. Where was that? Female, she was actually get irritated by one of her son, which was also fully growing in the area. And before he comes independent or you know, you know, go away from his father's home range or territory, 
And it happened, she had a kill. As a mother and a son eventually found out and he joined the mother. And uh, there was no happiness there. She didn't like it since so they don't actually share the kill. So she would actually walk backwards as a reversed in one of these branches and it comes an end of the growth of the branches. And she didn't notice that since she was pushing it further away by that young male and then eventually she fall and she stood up and move again. I didn't see her limp, which is so amazing. I mean, it was scary things to watch. Leopard lover, uh, you know, a, a leopard's whisker or cats, especially leopards' whiskers, so important uh, in the way they use them. Especially, they a very silent hunter. Sometimes they go through tall grasses or twigs. In that way, this length of these whiskers, you know, it's a whole, you know, wide of the body of that cat, the whole entire body, uh, and on both sides. So then, when they move, they always, you know, control these whiskers forward towards where they're going. So every time these whiskers touch whatever is in front of that leopard, or that cat, and then it will stop eventually. That is like a signal, um, sensitive, where they feel everywhere they go. Wherever it's, the whisker is going to fit, it means that leopard is going to walk through. You know, both sides, it won't, it won't going to touch anything or disturb anything. But if those whiskers touch anything, then, then she know the whole body is going to touch, even though she will walk through, but then it will make a lot of noise. You know, it's so important that you, you find them on lines, mainly lines, you know, they don't actually, when they hunt, it's not serious, like what these leopards do, because they, they're in pride. A lot of times seeing them stalk, they can stalk right in the open, but surround the game, but these are hunt very much solitary, so they are not in group. And they're very silent hunt as well. Bring that question again. Um, sure, you know, especially if we talk about leopards, which are um, mainly, you know, big cats from lions to a leopard. All of these small sorts of cats are under them. They're kind of like a very much, you know, the enemy, but not an enemy. It's so that sometimes they are wouldn't much cooperate together. In that way, you find, you know, ever so small, usually get out or immediately don't get out, then you get, you get killed right on the spot. So you see in leopard sometimes, for example, go for a or sable, or even caracol, so that it's all about uh, that they also have a strong power to be able to do it, but uh, driven off different species that feed on the same source of food they are, 
And that's pretty much it. it same to line where lines are also doing the same. They were driven away other carnivores. This is the way the way too big in cat species on their own. So I and Neil are going to take another moment here while we're taking you over another live guide. Lepazolo is my favorite and I like when they're just relaxed. No, but here we, we've come across two lionesses and it looks like these are sub-adults. So these two lionesses belong to the mother that we saw yesterday mating. So the lioness that was mating Kibogoyo is their mother. And their mother is a breakaway from the river pride. So yesterday we were discussing about how often do lions mate and after successively weaning their cubs so they'll come into estrus about two years so it's time because this looks like about two years so their mother has already gone into estrus so she'll be mating she'll be mating with kibogoyo and then kibogoyo will mate with her about three to four days. So after that, she will, after she conceives, she'll come back to join the youngsters here. And in, in time when she's about to give birth, she'll again isolate herself to go to a place where she think it's safe, where she'll go and give birth. And then later on, after the cubs about seven, seven weeks old, she'll introduce them back to these youngsters. The good the advantage that they have. So these two will never leave their mother. So they'll stick around in, in that natal pride. So if there were two males, then unfortunately they will have to leave the natal pride. But lionesses or female lions never leave their natal prides. At the moment they're not yet experienced to hunt on their own. Most of the time I've saw them depending on mom. But they've seen mom hunt, they've actually been trained because when lions get to about nine months old, they, they follow mom and they follow the rest of the pride in a hunt and that is when they first introduced to hunting. So at least now they can try on their own because there are two of them until mom comes back so they have to be fending for themselves. They look a little bit hungry. They look like they've been scanning over for food. So it seems like they might be on a hunt soon. They look desperate watching over where mom was. Okay, thank you so much for your, for your question. The only time when lions or big cats will attack and eat other cats is when they come into confrontation. Let's say for example a pride walks into this pride area and they happen to come across these two so the fight that comes up sometimes might be fatal, sometimes might end up to death and that is the only time you find that they can be, eat they can be eaten. But not always that you'll find that cats will go for other cats for food but you see sometimes lions going for leopard and cheetah leopard going for cheetah so you always see that kind of cat interaction where you find one cat eating the other but when it comes to a lion interspecies you find that only during fight that will always attack to eat but different species lion leopard lion cheetah and leopard you find that lion becoming the because they are the apex predator they will always go for other cats but only specific species come into that kind of behavior when they come into a fight
these two are looking desperate. It seems like they've not eaten. So I'm going to stick around with them here. I would like to see them hunt on their own, which will be very nice, since mom will only take about a week before she rejoins them. So as I wait here watching these two, let me take you over to another live location. Well, we are here at the Chitra waterhole and we're now looking at some hippopoptomai. Um, unfortunately, we had to leave Mulwati, the male leopard, because he was, well, just too skittish and refused to tolerate our presence. Very peaceful here. I love this weather. Again, that's the kind of expectant atmosphere. I paused there because there are squirrels and birds shouting all over the place. And then I thought I heard an impala also shouting, but I didn't. So it is only the atmosphere that is expectant because of the clouds overhead. It is not that I think there is actually a predator in the offing just yet. Oxpecker finding a little island to sit on. Often these squirrels are just liars. Hang on, there we go. There. Okay, let's move. The impalas are alarming. Straight across there. We might get lucky, whoops, we might also break the car, I might lose Gerrit off the back, nothing is impossible. Now either that squirrel has got a serious case of long sight, or it's just entirely coincidental that it happened to be shouting at the same time that the Impala were, because they're a long way from the dam there. There they are. But there's some males coming from the other direction. Definitely alarming. Ba ba ba. But now they've stopped. Still, the squirrel behind us is shouting. Right, we'll see what we can find here. James, welcome back to this side of the world and I have left my lionesses and we have a huge herd of Cape Buffalo. This is a breeding herd and looks like they're very happy to be eating their favorite food which is in plenty. Buffaloes feed on different types of grasses including herbs and they need to drink every day. It is a very big herd we have here. It's spread out quite a long way, all the way to the top there. You can see that. There's so many. These are good, maybe 500, 600 of them. And they're spread out everywhere. An adaptation with this Cape Buffalo is they've grown those massive horns and attain and a demeanor that is 
respected by very many. They are very aggressive, and that is an adaptation that has made them successful. They are attacked, but whoever attacks them has to be very, very careful. Yeah, we have Oxpecus landing on top of the vehicle. I don't know if you can hear that. They are found in East Africa, all the way to Southern Africa. They live for about 23 years. I'm gonna just relax for a little bit and let you enjoy the sounds of the ox peckers on top of the, of the vehicle. Yes, those guys look like they're on a mission. They don't want to stay for very long, the toppies, so they have left. They're allowed to leave. It is normal to find toppies running across the plains. There is a fly that lays some eggs on their nose, it irritates them, and they just want to get out of an area from the irritation. And back to our buffaloes, they're still inquisitive to who you know I am, they're still looking at me. This is an animal that has never gotten used to vehicles. Jenny, do the buffalo female or buffaloes have horns? Yes, they do. They both have. They are differently built, like that's a female, yeah, that's a female, and you can see the middle there, it's not um, like thick, it's not built to fight, because females don't fight, but if we find your male, you will see like that is a male there, you will see that they have much thicker boss, thicker horns, and those are to cushion the brain slightly from damage. Also around the neck, they have the thickest skin and that is for protection during fighting. If they gore each other, so they don't get injuries all the time. So the skin is much thicker around the neck unlike the rest of the body. So that is you know, the difference between male and female. Young ones are born without horns, but within a week, they're so signs of them starting to grow see the little one there it's very brown that is the sort of color they have when they they born they're almost brown and then slowly they start attaining the black color at the age of around six months onwards yeah that cattle egret must be enjoying that ride yeah all the birds around the buffalo are taking full advantage of any creature that's trying to get away. I'm talking about mosquitoes, dragonflies, um, grasshoppers, even walking um, spiders. Uh, look at this. This is one of the other birds that take advantage of the buffaloes. This is the blue-eared glossy starling really beautiful blue-eared glossy starling quite a good number of them it's one of our large starlings that we get here they're also taking a full advantage of everything that's trying to get away from the buffalo so there are very many creatures that benefit from a big herd of buffalo like this um, being around 
Well, I'm gonna try and stick here a little bit longer. Let's take you to another live location. This other side of the Mara, where our two young lionesses seems like they want to walk away because there's a presence of elephants. We see a matrix just close to the vehicle, just happening to walk to that lion's direction. And they have a small calf. Normally, big matrix will not tolerate predators close to them, especially when they have calves. It's that time of the day when elephants are starting to walk towards the marsh area where the grass is soft, there's plenty of water and at least favorable for the calves. see that little one trying to observe how the rest of the group is eating but then they, she doesn't have coordination with the trunk yet until when they're about two and a half almost three that's when they have full coordination how to use their trunks Those are two teenagers, just went rumbling. Just trying to sniff the air, see what we are, what, what is close to the vehicle. That is how they always analyze and get the scent from within the surrounding. You can tell this matrix is nothing by just looking at the at the teeth there. Look at how big they are. And right up in the front is another family. Jerry, thank you so much for your question. I think there's something going on there. All those elephants, there's a stand up there. Look at them raising their heads and their trunks. So something might have scooped them there. Not quite sure what's going on there. I can only see some water box but something went through. So Jerry, back to your question. I think it's only green here where the marsh is, but the Mara is not always green all year round. So we have two rainy seasons. We have the long rainy season and we have the short rains from November through December. And then our long rains happens to end of February through May. So those are the times that we always see the Mara becoming green. But in, either, in those other times of the year, it's always brown, golden, because the grass gets dry. Sometimes if young bulls happen to walk into herds like that, there's always a standoff. You find that the females with the very young calves don't really entertain bulls who come to join them and I think that might be the reason
This is two different herds. You see the one walking from just in front of us, that's a different herd, and the one that we just happened to be close to the vehicle is a different herd. So every morning we see them congregating in these swamps, and then later on in the afternoon as they head back to the escarpment, they split into their individual groups. So as I watch these elephants slowly heading towards the river, let me take you over to another live location. Well, from elephants with team back to buffalo. This huge herd needs a lot of area with plenty of grass and herbs to be able to satisfy their appetite. And the area they are in, it's so prime, there is no shortage of that. The reason I'm here, it is not as hot. So I'm just trying back here, we always come to drink, and sometimes they love getting into the water and wallow. But looks like they'll down the water. Heading off to the right, I don't blame them, it's too cold. They've had a drink maybe at the back, at the back of the marsh, so they don't really want to have a drink. Remember that these guys have got one of the most acute sense of hearing. It's another adaptation to be able to survive here. Their sight and smell is very, very good. And there is no like dominance at the moment when you see them like this but when a female come into season that's when you find males squaring off or fighting one another to try and find a place in the hierarchy so that they can have the best chance to sire their own offsprings that's when you find the buffaloes fighting one another they will associate in what you see here it's called a breeding herd which is Everybody from old to young, but bulls break away once they reach maturity from the age of about six, seven, eight. They become too big and slow, following breeding hard like this all the time is tiring and tiresome. So they normally find a place with grass cover and plenty of car, you know, of water and just retire relax there every now and then when a herd like this passes by they will join them main reason is to try and find females in season and so they will meet with the females and eventually finding another spot to rest so every now and then you'll find you know big bulls among cows and calves those are the first few that are ahead it's very mushy there yeah, that one looks like he's been wallowing. That's what I expected, you know, them to do when they came very close towards me. They're always wallowing, adding like an extra layer of mud onto their skin, help reduce evaporation and sweating. At the same time, it's an um, sunblock and insect repellent. I mean, you know, it doesn't smell much, but it works in a different way where you know insects like this fly cannot bite through because it's very thick when they add the layer so it's an insect repellent it's overcast as you can see there we had a little bit of rain earlier but it has subsided it's, uh, it's just a beautiful scene yeah i'm gonna stick here for a little bit more 
Let's take you to another live location. Welcome back to the other side of the Mara. Our elephants have gone peacefully, so they had to give space to the gentle giants. And they've looked for a different spot at that termite mound where they'll come and scan again because it looks like they were scanning for for prey. But with elephants coming your way, you have to give way actually. They're desperately looking or facing where the mom is, but unfortunately the mom is mating. About a week ago I saw them with the mom, but then that lion that is mating their mother was actually being aggressive towards towards them and the reason being the mother was in distress the mother was trying so much to defend these youngsters so keeping that male away so sometimes when lion's pride become big and sometimes there might be tension within the prides there be fights within the prides so some of the lionesses choose to break away and this is definitely what has happened. So their mom broke away from the river pride to form now a smaller pride that will come to be. So if these two come into season and mate and have cubs, so it will be a pride coming up. Now that their mother, we know that she's mating. So in the next three and a half months, then we'll have cubs within this pride. So they'll all be very vigilant in watching over for the cubs. Sometimes we find lions in a pride will come into a synchronized estrus. So these two being the same age will m might have to come into the same estrus cycle. And it will be nice for them because when they both mate and get cubs of the same litter, then it will be very important because one of them might be staying around with the cubs protect the cubs as the, one, as the other one goes out to hunt. So they also do what you call communal nursing where either of the cubs will come and nurse or lactate from one of the lioness. So it's very, very important in a lion pride when lionesses come into estrus at the same time. MGN pretty sometimes doesn't know the lion's sleeping habit because when you find lions sleeping in the bush, it is always during the day. So sometimes you find that being in the open, they will always know that there are not lions there, especially when they are vigilant. So they always avoid places like that in the bushes because they know definitely there might be predators. I've seen prey walking or impalas, Thompson gazelle, giraffe and other animals, they always worry of predators. So they always alert knowing that within the environment there might be predators. But it's not only that they know their sleeping habits. The only animal that takes advantage knowing that the big pred predator c cats like leopard and lion are not during the day is the cheetah. So this is when they'll put their practice into action. So they have to hunt on their own because mom is not available, mom is not around. So let me wait and see what they're up to as I take you over to another live location. Right, we have got now sight of our spotted eagle owl mother but I think it's doo doo time for the baby because there has been no sign of the little cotton ball, ball puff and she hasn't so much as quivered during our stay here
brief as it has been. In fact, she is so perfectly still. Oh, well, there was a bit of movement there. But one wouldn't be... One would be forgiven for thinking she may be stuffed. She isn't. But I don't think we're about to have an amazing sighting of the youngster. That impala that we were following up on, I don't know what happened. They stopped calling and then there was nothing, so we left the area. We came up here. And we'll have a squiz around this part of the world and see what there is on offer. So I think we'll move on and see what else there is around here. So we've just had a little bit of rain this side and then decided to come back out and we were lucky enough to find some of a small herd of kudu. And you can see this female's not too bothered by our presence at this point. Now the rest of the herd has moved over in the direction that she's heading to. Let's have a look. Maybe she might just stop and feed at this tree for a little while. There's a young one to the back of her. Now, I find this often quite interesting about kudu. Where you'll find that they walk into a tree or a thick bush like this and then they hide their head. Now in this case, she's not, clearly not hiding. She is got no shame, as it turns out. But then they'd stand there for a long while and have a look at us like this through the bush. Oh, and there she goes. Now, unfortunately, she and the other kudus in this area have moved off. And they have crossed out of Ngala. So I think what we'll do is we'll continue and see if maybe we get lucky with something else that's out after that part of rain. Well, well done, Yuppie. Let's hope you can find something else. Well, here I have another set of Jaco puppies. I hope you got a glimpse of them. They're over there, very skittish. This is a totally different family from the one I've been seeing earlier and very distinctive. One of them has got a stumpy tail. You see the one in front, he lacks the tail. No tail at all. So this is a new family that I found, which is another bonus, tells me that the jackal population is growing and also the three we've been seeing in the past few months will find partners by this other family being very close to this area. I don't know if they're going to come, you know, if they're going to come in to view, but it's such good news. This family seems to be very, very shy, unlike the other one that normally comes close to the vehicle. These ones, they're trying to get away from me as much as possible. I don't know what happened to the one guy with a no tail completely. I don't know, it got ripped off by a predator when it was young or got infected. I cannot say exactly, you know, what happened. What I'll do is try to reposition, see if we can find them. If not, I will continue on. But it would be nice to share um, this sighting again with you guys because it's always exciting to find that you know we have more of everything. I don't know if you can find them here. The Bungay, I don't know if you can do your magic. I don't know where they are, sorry. Maybe we will be able to find them. 
I'll be there somewhere. I can see them. Oh, there they are, a long ways up. A long way up there. Bungay to the left. Nah, up, up there, there, somewhere there. Yeah, they disappeared off somewhere there, sorry, unfortunately. We have to allow them to have their wild life and because they are wild, they should be free. So I'll leave you with that sight. Hopefully they can, you can take a glimpse while we take you to another, you know, life's location. Isaac, but anyways, we're quite happy today. BK and I are smiling from ear to ear because Mike was also out on a bumble with some guests and he found us lions while we were hiding from the rain. Hey, BK. <laughs> it's been a very drizzly morning here on Pridelands. My name is Taylor McCurdy and on camera with me today is BK. And like I said, we're here at Pridelands Conservancy. We are in the greater, or not the greater, part of Baluli Game Reserve in the greater Kruger. Now, unfortunately, these lions are not on Pridelands at the moment. Literally, just yonder across this dirt road, is a, it's a boundary road, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. And uh, those two lionesses are sitting in Jajani. Now, there was quite a bit of roaring going on last night, but from all different directions. And I kid you not when I say, BK and I drive this road every single morning, except today. <laughs> we decided that with the rain that's around, we need to hang around big trees in case we have to escape from it, or at least try and h hide away from it. It's starting to come down again. And um, anyway, so Mike came around the side just to double check, which was very handy when you've got more than one vehicle out and driving around. You can work as a team and help find animals. So he spotted them, which is quite cool. Uh, this is actually quite a nice area for these lions because there's a lot of animals that live around here. We often see big herds of buffalo. There's always kudu, impala, zebra. Uh, it's a, not quite super open but you know for this this area it, it's a nice open clearing and with a huge drainage line running through it too and um, so good for leopards and then of course all the antelope species that like to live on the edge of drainage lines will, will be there too so i don't know too much about the lions and um, i've very rarely seen them all together but i'm happy to have them Karen, that's a fantastic question, and I don't even know the answer to that. When you've asked if lions also have anal glands like cats do, I would imagine that they do have anal glands. Dogs have got anal glands too. However, I don't think that they're using them for scent marking, and cats don't use them for scent, mar well, scent marking either. Um, if we go into sort of hyenas and mong mongoose and, and those kinds of things that have anal glands and use them... Um, or various pastings or secretions to scent mark, but these cats won't do that. They've got other sort of um, glands. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say yes, that they do have anal glands. They're staring intently across the drainage line, so I don't know if there are some kudu or something, uh, just trying to keep out of the, the on and off drizzle that we're having this morning. They don't seem to mind the rain. They're sitting right out in the open. But I wanted to tell you a little bit about what we've been doing over the past couple of weeks or what I've definitely been doing is every single morning we drive out all the way to the Moshlebeti River because there's at least two lionesses that are lactating and they've got cubs. One has got, I haven't seen the cubs, slightly older. And then there's another female that has got the tiniest little cubs. I wish I could show you some pictures. So we've been trying to catch them to get them uh, for all of you. Because if you don't know, lions are my favorite of the cats. I am not so fond of leopards. There's like one or two or maybe three leopards that I really, really enjoy. But these big tawny cats are my absolute favorite. So if they do get up or roll over, I'd like to see if they are lactating. The lioness that's laying down at the moment, one of her... Her mammary glands, there we go, looked slightly more black. And I wonder if it was a little wet patch. If she's... We, we think that there could even be more lionesses that are, that are lactating, but it's hard to see. Can you guys please roll over properly? But I haven't seen those two females. I try all the time. The rain is starting to come down now. I would imagine that these cats aren't necessarily going to sit out and in it. I probably would move a little bit and go and find a bit of shelter. Although Isaac and Tim and 
uh, David would all agree in the Mara, or anyone that spent some time in the Mara, how many successful hunts we saw as soon as the rain came down, especially with the lions. And now what that lioness is looking is a herd of impala. So perhaps, ladies, this is your moment to make a move while you've got the rain, the pitter-patter, and it will, I suppose, conceal the sound. Not that anything is dry at the moment. There's very little rustling when you walk through the grass. But all these things sort of help. Also helps hide the scent. So it could work in their advantage. That's why you must never be afraid to come out on safari in the in the rain. Just, you know, if you are worried about your hair like me, make sure that you... And I'm just joking. Make sure that you have a nice poncho or perhaps a rain suit and something to protect your camera with. And I would 100% risk it because you can see some of the best sightings ever. You can probably hear the rain now. Now, Dion, it's quite interesting. I suppose your question goes back to what we were just talking about, and it goes a little something like this. Do, you, do lions like the rain, or do they try and avoid water like, you know, normal cats do? I think this depends on where those lions are geographically, because let's talk about the lions of the Greater Kruger, for example, or even here, just here on Pridelands and the Baluli Game Reserve. Yes, if, we, if you sort of head a little bit further north and northwest, you get the Olifants River, which is being we obviously got the Motlobetsi that runs uh, through uh, Quenga, which is a property that we can traverse on. The lions don't really have to cross that. There are other ways to get across that river. However, if you go into the Mara, for example, just because you're all so familiar with it, the Mara River, if animals want to go from one side to the other, there's no big land bridges or anything like that. They have to cross the water. Some will obviously choose to cross in shallower water, but if they need to swim, they will swim. Or you go up into Botswana and you go into Kwai, where the lions are so used to water, it doesn't even bother them. So I think that depends um, on a lot of things. However, I will tell you a very funny story. When I was working down in the Eastern Cape um, of South Africa on a reserve, there's this, this beautiful big male lion. He's enormous and he's gorgeous, but what an absolute sissy. There was a puddle on the road and all the sub-adult lions ran around and slipped and kind of fell in it, but they were quite happy to cross the puddle. I kid you not when I say that this lion did a 300-meter loop from the rest of the pride because he just refused to get his paws wet. So that made me chuckle quite um, uh, quite a bit. So I think it also depends on the lion. If I was a lion, I'd probably spend most of my time in the, in there. What are those things? Oh, those are baboons. Sorry, I just saw something dark walking down the road and I got excited and I was about to shout, wild dogs, but it's not. It's not wild dogs, everybody. Too soon to panic, it's just baboons. But anyways, um, so with the pride of lions uh, in this area, it's been quite tricky because we don't often get to see them all together, especially with there being a few females that have got young cubs at denning. They're notorious for spending some time on their own. I don't know how much of a pride introduction has happened just because I personally haven't seen it and I haven't seen too many pictures. But they're suspected to be about eight or nine lionesses in one pride with two big males. You might remember those males, the Masungulo males. They're beautiful. Um, they were the ones that um, unfortunately came in and they killed an, a lioness and have pushed Lagatha, who we also think was a part of this big pride, and those two younger male lions, which we've also seen before, all the way into the far west onto Pridelands. So it's, it's a bit confusing as to what's going on, and I can't really say much until I actually see them all together and, and, and can get some pictures and, and understand them. But I have not seen other lionesses other than young Lagatha for, my goodness, quite some time now. So it is, it is nice. These do look like older girls. Maybe we saw them right when we started going live and probably, you might remember we had one day, one beautiful morning when we caught glimpses of um, some lionesses. So maybe if some of you do have some screenshots, you can do some comparisons and see if um, any of these girls are the, you know, the ones that we saw. So I look forward, I look forward try, to trying to figure out the lion dynamics. So I just hope that we get to see them more often and that they come through here. 
But I think we'll just sit here for a little bit longer. We might just have to go and find some shelter because the rain is starting to come down a bit hard again. We're going to lose sight of these lionesses. We went into the thicket. Unfortunately, we can't see what they were eyeing on. Seems like they were on a mission there. But now I'm heading back to where I saw the, the mother mating yesterday. It seems like it's over to that plane just in front of us. So I'm heading that direction. And if I'm not lucky, I'll then head back to where I left Olalashe. She's also looking for elephants. The elephants will be walking through these plains in, in time to get head to the marsh, head to the Mara River. But sometimes when you, we're driving like this, we always look for some signs of the wild, like cheetahs will be up on the termite mound because of the long grass. If it's leopard, leopard who might be on these trees. So those are some of, some, some of the signs that I've been looking for here. It seems like this place has been deserted. About a week and a half ago, there's lots of zebras and wildebeest here. That's why the grass is a little bit short. So it would be a nice mission to see that lion. I understand that there's some two lions over in that forest edge, but it's a little bit hard to see them since it's so thick. This is a marsh that we always see elephants and water bugs. But I don't know where they are this morning. Or maybe because the lions got too close. That's the reason why we don't see lots of planes came here. It's very beautiful this morning. You can see the cloud. So it's not that hot. So it's going to be a good morning lots of activities. Sometimes when it's too hot you find that lions walk in for shade so we happen not to see lions when it's too hot or maybe when it's super cold. About two days ago it was very cold in the morning. We ended up not seeing a single lion. So fingers crossed to see that lioness and Kipogoya as I take you over to another live location. Now we often talk about this but we seldom see it and what we have here is a bark spider who is rolling up her web and eating it. Sorry, it's, she's quite difficult to see. There she is. Got her? And so what she's done is she's folded it up, she's eaten some of it, and she's left it all up so that this evening she can come and use the same support thread and reconvene or reconstitute the nest, not reconvene. There, look at her eating it up now. That's so cool. The rain has now started to fall on us, I'm afraid. It's not in particularly dire just yet. But we often talk about this and seldom see it. And so now her support strand is almost completely invisible and she'll go and rest on the tree. For the rest of the day. She may even have a partner waiting there for her, a lover, a small lover. Hello, my dear. Did you bring me anything to eat? Shut up, George. You get what you give, or I'll eat you. Because, of course, she is not immune from eating her husband. Don't see another one there. It would be very small though. Hmm. Well, 
Well, yes, Black Widow Spider, certainly in comparison with your modus operandi, it is a pretty amazing sighting. Now, the Black Widow Spider comes from an entirely different family of spiders, of course. This is the biggest family, the Aranidae, and they are the orbweb spiders, so all the traditional spiders, including Charlotte and she who built her web and, you know, their ilk, all belong to the same family of spiders. And that includes these guys, the golden orbweb spiders. And now she's settling in. Can you still see her? Well, Joy, she's eating it and then reabsorbing it. So <clears throat> the process of reabsorption is uh, through the mouth. So she's eating it and then basically digesting it and it will be reused later on. I'm afraid we're going to have to do some rainproofing at this stage. All right, sorry about that. I'll see you later. Well, well, good luck, James, with your rain. We have a little bit of sunshine. And it is so beautiful. The elephants have come out of the trees out in the open. This is a very beautiful, small, hard, breeding herd of elephant. Remember, this big animal has been faced with all kind of elements in the last about 50 years from a deforestation, serious poaching, human population actually pushing them to very limited areas, whereas they need huge areas to roam and also a lot of habitat lost due to that population. So to see a nice breeding herd like this is always a bonus and nice to share it with you. They're always led by the head matriarch who is like carries the, what I would refer it to, a big, um, I'd call it memory carrier. I'll call it that. And she's got all the details about the environment that is around them, either 50 kilometers to 70 kilometers away. She's got that data. She's actually the database. And she leads them every day foraging and grazing to what their body needs. She's got experience to learn that, you know, within that certain type of period and date, this kind of creeper will be, you know, around this area, and so she leads them there. They feed on many kinds of grasses, lead, you know, very many trees and also creepers, and they're always on the move. There is a pattern that our elephants have grown and we've gotten used to it here in the Mara where, you know, they're always heading out to the open plains during the night and during the day they normally go down towards the trees. You see the forest a long ways down there. That's where they go, spend the whole day, then coming out again out into the open. I'm back at my spot with my three riverside lionesses. You can see them there. One is sort of looking around and then the other you can see the leg. She's got belly up. Resting and it's about time I think they start getting active again. They normally do this you know, resting for a little bit and then waking up to 
try and find out if there is something that has appeared in their territory or where they are. Well, this is a very beautiful area that I'm in. I'm not going anywhere. We also want our lions to hunt. And just a moment ago, they were standing up. They actually jumped to their feet. And I couldn't quite work out what on earth they were looking at. I still don't know what they're looking at, but they're kind of looking just behind and to the left of our vehicle. Like I said, notorious for kudu, zebra, impala, even buffalo. They all like to linger around here. And the troop of baboons streamed on in as well as the impala. So there is a little pan not too far away from here. And maybe they're heading in that uh, the area. The grass is quite nice and long. Although you can see the grass is actually lovely and lush all over at the moment. But I suppose everybody wants to eat the best stuff. But lions, please, pretty please, for BK and my sanity, can you come walking towards us? Also, when they were standing up, I'm pretty sure the lioness that's laying at the back, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw suckle marks. So I think she is one of the lactating females. Again, it was such a, it was a quick glimpse. Um, she was not being particularly obliging. Um, but I did take some photos. I suppose I can just actually zoom in. Yes, I forgot about that function. I'm a technological dinosaur when it comes to these kinds of things. I need constant reminding. But you can see. And it's a good day today. Obviously, it, I don't think it's going to get too hot. I think it's going to be like mid-20 degrees Celsius, which is, I suppose, a freezing cold day for us in the low felt. But that's perfect for the lions because... It means that they don't need to go and lay under a shady tree. They can just spend the entire day waiting, watching for things to come around. Because remember, lions don't just hunt at night. They let us rid that old wives' tale. They hunt whenever they want, whenever there are things to eat. Now, I'm going to try and flag down a vehicle to ask them to please not drive past us. But we will see. I'm just... I feel so terrible doing this, but I'm just asking if they can just maybe wait patiently. So that otherwise we're going to get a bright green car that's going to go straight through our frame, which is not going to be particularly great. There's vehicles all around, so I do apologize. But I think that they might pop down and have a little siesta. And remember when lions, of course, they do sleep, or leopards, even though they are fast asleep, if you will. You know what? I think these guys are absolutely desperate to come on through, so I am going to let them drive past, and we'll sit and wait for the girls, and I'm sure you'll be back with us soon. Welcome back to the Mara, and it seems like this morning it's a lion morning. So we find one of the marsh pride collision lion. His name is Kipogoyo, and it seems like he's sleeping. I'm not sure where the lioness is, the one that he was mating with yesterday. The mother to that, to those two lionesses that we just happened to see a few minutes ago. It seems like a warm place, but a little bit breezy. So I'm sure the lioness is, is just somewhere around here. It seems a little bit quiet. The reason why I haven't seen lots of playing games around because when lions, there's a presence of lion around, you find that most of the playing games tend to walk away from that area. I've seen him just raising his head once or twice to scan and then went back straight to sleep. So this morning we saw Lashe who's mating and then him who's mating. So this is part of a coalition that have conquered more than four or five territories within the Mara. So with their presence here, it seems like they might push it a little bit further to maybe the Lolo Pride, or sometimes maybe to the Oino, because we're not far from the Oino, because we are on the edge of the Mogoro and the River Lioness Prides. Two days ago, I saw his brothers, so it seems like 
they're out on a mission. I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to conquer and become pride males of this territory. But because Olalashi has been moving around, sometimes lions can play a trick to mate with multiple males just to protect their cubs. So him, because they always walk out of this area and head towards the Mara Reserve, so it's always a possibility that the other males that are present in this side we might meet with the females and then the cubs assured protection now this swamp here we have lots of herons it looks like they're all waiting patiently to go for food these are always very patient birds especially when the pools are drying up because it's almost getting to the dry season and some of these ponds get to dry and when the water becomes shallow the fish struggle a lot when it's too hot so these birds play a trick which is called umbrella so they spread their wings to form a shade and those fish that come those tadpoles for shade they end up being eaten by those birds very very clever tactic There's more than 25 herons there. I wonder if I call it Heron Island. seems sleepy <clears throat> with the lioness not being around I'm wondering what's going to happen or what's happening as I was explaining yesterday sometimes lionesses will play false Easter's just to protect their young ones so I'm not sure if that's what's happening or not because I can't see her around so I'll stick here to find out if she's going to come or, or maybe if she's split up. As I wait for the lioness to re-emerge, not sure where she is, let me take you over to another live location. Also playing the patience game, I suppose. Everything has settled down a little bit now. The vehicles have come and gone. And now we wait. You have to do a lot of waiting with big cats. But that's actually a lot of fun. Now, for those of you who have never, ever been on a real-life safari before, obviously you want to try and see as much as you can. But if you're a seasoned safari goer and you have gone on safari a number of times, years and years and years, the last thing that you really want to do is race around and, and try and see 45 million different animals in one game drive. Well, this is what I've at least noticed, is you, you tend to want to spend quality time with one particular animal. So whether you decide to do elephants, or at least that's what I, I've seen, um, or you're going to sit with lions, and you're going to sit with lions until they sleep for two or three hours four five six hours and then they wake up and then you watch them go about their day as well and it, it is really really amazing can i be okay look at this quickly look there we're gonna show i'm so sorry we're on a boundary road so the power lines it, it, remember i was telling you about the troop of baboons look at this so like i said boundary road you're all familiar with it unfortunately there are power lines he's running off to the right off to the right there's a big male 
He's going up the tree now. Yeah, 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 he's just there. He is incredibly upset. He's seen the lion. Now we know with baboons, it's not just one big male that is in charge of a troop. They have an oligarchy, so there's a few of them. So he's now alerting everybody in this area that's now not safe. There is a potential threat, so that's why he's shouting. See how he's trying to act so intimidating as well, bouncing on the branches. Although those, that's a lead wood that he's on, so it's not, not going to make as dramatic effect as I think he's hoping for. And all the little baboons and all the vervet monkeys and all the impala and kudu and anything else that was around here will now know that there are lions. It was quite funny though because when he first spotted them he was down on the ground and he stood right up on his hind legs as if to say is that what I'm seeing I I is that what it is and very quickly realized ah lions and sprinted up the tree and it feels much safer up there although I say this and I've seen lions go up trees before chase things so careful buddy but uh, there's l lots of places he can escape to not that the lioness is so interested in him What you can't see, we're not going to worry about it now, we'll stay on this big male, is that the rest of the troop is now running in a complete opposite direction. So they're running back to where they came from. And I'm pretty sure that this troop of baboons just lives in the strange line. See, a couple of other youngsters have now started barking too. Quite a daunting sound though, hey, if you've never been in the bush before and you heard that. All the animals have unbelievable alarm calls and obviously it needs to sound scary. It sounds quite scary. <laughs> How's that though? Barking though and also just grabbing a snack. Priorities. This baboon is my spirit animal. <laughs> Well, I'm quite happy that this little excitement happened this morning. It's definitely been a while for for me, but we're going to stay here. We're going to see what the baboons get up to. There's also an elephant moving in on the scene. From Taylor and baboons to buffaloes, lions and elephants. Though the elephants are not in the frame, but they're not very far. It's gonna get interesting here because these elephants are heading towards the lions. I don't know if they're gonna run into them, but if they pick them up, it's always a show of power where the elephant will try and show dominance that it's the true king of beasts in these plains or the true king of the jungle in these plains. And so it will try and chase them away these elephants are not going towards the marsh which is a sort of the pattern we normally get victoria jumbo how long is an elephant pregnant for it carries its young for about 22 months That is how long it is pregnant for. That's a very long time. And at birth, the little guy can be around 120 kilos. So it's a very heavy a little young one. I don't see it. Well, well, it looks like we have twins in this herd. They look very, very... Yeah, it looks like... Um, yeah, we have some twins there. Oh! 
Yes, yes. Uh, there was something that happened very interesting. The one was carrying a branch on its back, but the other mate decided that you're not going to have it in your back. I'm going to have it in my tummy. And so he took it off. Over here, communication has been made. We have to get out of this area. We have to leave. I don't know if they picked up the lion smell, which are here to the left. And the, the matriarch decided that it was time to leave. And you can tell definitely the young ones have been put in the middle for protection. That is usually the strategy they play or the show. And now she has waited and she is leading them in front, followed by the second largest female. And everybody else is coming in from behind. There is a small herd of older ones that are tagging behind. Definitely, I think she picked up the smell of the lions, the lionesses, and decided that it was time to leave this area as within the shortest time possible. And she strategized to have the little ones in the middle and the older ones in front and to leave the easy spot. How is that, having the big three in one frame? Although you don't see the lions really well, they're here in front, brown color, then elephants and buffalo. The big five are named after not the size, but the anger they carry and possess. Potentially, they are animals that will come for you without any reason and will try and get rid of you. Getting rid of you is killing you. And so that's how they were named to be the big five. It's not all about the size. It is about the anger and the potential to, for them to kill you without anything, without any warning. So we have them there. Nice, nice picture. Definitely the elephants did speak and they're off out of this area. They're constantly on the move. They need lots and lots and lots and lots of food. So they have to be continuously, you know, on the move. Okay, I'm gonna stick here. Let's take you to another live location. And the mood of these two bateliers pretty much spell the mood here in Gala today where we've had bouts of rain on and off. Not heavy. But you can see these two are perched below the canopy of the tree on one of the lower branches. And the one on the right, you can clearly see how the feathers are raised on the head and the back. Now you often find on an overcast day, like what we have now, you can see the gray of the sky at the back. These birds stay perched for slightly longer. Most of the large birds of prey. Now we haven't seen any botelias fly over this area. And since they are territorial, and this is a male and female, and this is the pair within this particular area. And they've been here for a number of years. At least five now. Well, it doesn't look like they're gonna move off anytime soon. So here we go. I just mentioned earlier that there were two elephant bulls that they were making their way onto the scene and that's exactly what's happening. Uh, the elephants have now arrived, or at least one of them. 
and not quite beelining it in the direction of the lionesses. But he's slowly making his way there. I don't think the elephants know that the, the lions are there just yet. So not that those two lionesses are a threat at all to a big elephant bull like this. Oh, now he's picking up speed. See, the lionesses might just sit very quietly. We'll see what they do. Okay, elephant is now spotted the lions. There he comes. The lions are up. And he is saying, right, get a move on, you two. <laughs> it didn't really take him much to to chase them. Look how he's smelling where they were sitting. Picking up that scent. So you see elephants from a young age will learn what predators smell like. I mean, there he's getting a good whiff of them. It was actually not such a bad interaction. If you think about it, he didn't trumpet. He barely flared his ears. He didn't, you know, pretend to try and throw something at them. He didn't charge towards them. Are you going to now eat where the lions were laying? Perhaps it has a nice taste about it. How cool was that, though? If there were a breeding herd that was around here, it would be a completely different story with all the young calves that are normally within the herds. Oh, much trumpeting. It would have been disastrous. Not, not for the lions. I mean, not for the elephants, of course, but for the lions. The little ones would all be quite distressed. And these bulls just like to throw their weights around. Like I said, just walked up, acknowledged that he was, the lions were there, and then said, right, off you go. This is where we're going to be eating for the day. We've lost visual of the lionesses, though. They've moved back further into the bushes. I'm keeping an eye on them. I've got like a... You can see them a little bit, but not very much. So we'll just see what this Ellie bull does. No, he might go back for them and chase them well away, which will be unfortunate for us because we cannot cross this boundary. But still, some excitement. I can't tell you how much joy this brings my heart. Like, I absolutely love lions. Elephants are my all-time favorite animal. So when you get to see them interacting, that's quite nice. Oh, look, now the impala have come out. You see, BK, 12 o'clock. So they were, remember I told you right at the beginning there was a herd of impala. So what's happened... There they all are. What's happened now is the... The impala have now seen the lionesses. And I know it seems like a ridiculous thing, but they're charging towards them. We won't be able to hear them. We won't be able to hear them barking. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to get this person to stop. Sorry, two seconds. You can see them all high alert, heads up. They're probably snorting, but it's a bit far away for us to pick up. And they're going to keep moving forward towards those lions just so that they know, right, we know you're here. You're not going to be able to catch us. We might even get to see them bouncing around, which is always something quite spectacular. So the lionesses are disappearing now. They're, there we go. I think BK just managed to catch a glimpse of them. There they go, right into the back of the bushes. And that is going to be the last view of those girls. But maybe they'll tuck themselves into that drainage line. It'll be a good spot to lay and wait. Um, for everybody to settle down. Of course, the baboons barking, the elephant has stirred some trouble, the impala have let everyone know that there are predators here too. So, after a bit of a siesta, maybe the rain continues to shower down. Let's hope they're coming back across for the sunset safari. Talking about dramatic, usually the sight of a vulture perch on a dead tree is quite dramatic and especially with two bateliers nearby three of the birds that would normally be associated with something dead nearby Yeah, we can see the one but Leo is still off to the right. The other one's flown to the left-hand side of the tree. And that looks like... That one is actually... If I'm not mistaken, spreading its wings out a little bit. I can feel that it's getting a slightly warmer now. We haven't had rain for the past 15, 20, and it's a little bit later in the morning. And with these large birds of prey, especially the vultures, they use the rising air currents, warm air currents, from the Earth's surface to push themselves up and that way save energy. You can 
can see there's a lot of preening going on there. Straightening out the feathers. I wonder if this is the, the so-called warm-up before the flight. I also noticed with the vulture that the vulture has also been preening. Now, these bateliers, like I said, they have a nest in this area and they've been nesting here for many years. Now that vulture over there, and you can see it's also got its wings open, trying to bask in the sun. It's been a wet morning here, so I'm sure they'd like to dry out before it starts soaring. Now that vulture's also got a nest somewhere nearby, beyond, just beyond where it's perched. At the back, there's quite a few, quite a few um, nests of vultures along this dry riverbed. Taylor, mate, I've got a question from you. Can a bird spring, sprain its wing? Yes, indeed they can. Um, with vultures, I've often noticed there are particular groups within the area because it's such a rare bird and an endangered bird not so rare more endangered they do pick up birds often with sprained wings which could happen in many different ways power lines it could be that it's a young bird trying to fly and something happens to it while it's on the ground so yes indeed they can in that case, if it's very serious, it means the bird might never be able to fly again. But, uh, it's also interesting to see the contrast between these two. The bateliers, both of them are sitting inside the canopy of the tree, where the vulture was sitting right out on the dead tree with no leaves. And part of the battalier's advantage is that it's got a very short tail, so it's very maneuverable. And I think we might leave them here and probably continue along this dry riverbed. Well, from Yapi and his vultures and butlers to something different and very cute. I have my other family of jackal puppies and you can tell this one is very different. Not shy at all. They're always inquisitive about the vehicle. They're always coming towards the vehicle and looks like they're about and about heading towards one of their dens. They have about three of them and they usually travel from one to the other. I think what has happened is they haven't had a meal and so it looks like they want to go to one of the closer dens to find if you know the, the parents have come with something. We did see the adults heading towards one of the dens and so I think that's what exactly know they're doing they're heading towards one of their dens to see if they're going to find their parents for some food they're still very dependent of their parents they feed on small insects berries and even carrion at this stage they're not drinking they're only eating solids and provided by the two adults they normally will bring food back towards where they've been hunting to feed the young ones. Sometimes they will also regurgitate a bit of meat for the young ones. They are born with a litter of about six to eight and mortality rate is very, very high. Remember these little guys play a very big role because they are small creatures that nobody else can feed on like the mice uh, small rodents 
insects like um, grasshoppers, they get rid of them. Even dung beetles in, in dung, they will eat them. So also they play a very big role. Very vocal if they want to, they can be very loud. They have a very loud howl that is used to communicate and also to warn others of danger, especially when they see leopard. They are very, very loud. To me today, they look a little bit uh, gloomy. They don't look very playful and friendly. I think they haven't seen their parents, they haven't eaten, so they are going to one of their dens. This is what happens. They have three points where they can find one another. If they don't find one, for in one, the parents in one den for a very long time, they'll head to the second one. And if they're not in the second one, they'll go to the third one. And they're sure to find them in one of the dens. So that's how it works. Smelling, getting to learn different smells from different animals. It is very useful. They've picked up, you know, a scent there, they're smelling. might look like you know they don't know where they're going but definitely I'm sure they're heading towards the other den and they look very relaxed at the same time they're very wary they can run really 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 fast and can dodge and dart you know even the cheetah or the leopard so that's how they defend themselves well I'm gonna leave you with that beautiful sight as I move on That's a nice segue into my next discussion on animal navigation and um, the description of whether those jackals can find their way or not. Anyway, we are not sitting with a particularly poor navigator ourselves. This is the giraffe. In case you had never seen a giraffe before, this is what one looks like. Uh, fairly easily recognizable, fairly unmistakable, tall, brownish patches on yellowish fur. Uh, I mean, the most distinguishing feature of the giraffe, of course, is the d very distinctive mane on its neck. Other than that, you know, it's just sort of an obvious shape. Anyway, back on to animal migration and navigation. You'll find that those jackal pups, and indeed this giraffe, I suspect, are blessed with most likely the ability to remember their locations so they'll learn their environments unlike a lot of animals which navigate using some learned behavior but some innate sense of earth's magnetism or uh, polarized light etc you'll find that most mammals seem to navigate or a lot of mammals that don't migrate big distances will navigate purely by memory so they learn the environment and they've actually quite interestingly discovered the part of the brain that allows that to happen and I suppose not very surprisingly it's located in the hippocampus certainly in rats and so most likely also in many other mammals and the hippocampus is the site of short-term memory and certainly memory formation so although a lot of memories apparently aren't stored there permanently that's where they're formed <clears throat> so if you take the hippocampus out of a rat it is unable to find its way anywhere and in the hippocampus there are now let me just try and remember there's two kinds of cells and they've done this down to you know exceptional detail they reckon that there's a visual kind of mapping mechanism where they'll learn different landmarks and places and also there are cells that help them to orientate so although they don't a rat doesn't know the difference between north south east and west it has certain cells that fire when it's facing a certain direction and you know these correspond with what could be roughly i suppose um compared 
with cardinal points. So they've got a compass sense and a map sense. And that's all located in the hippocampus, which is a small piece of brain that looks like a seahorse in a human. I'm now going to go home and have some breakfast. And we've just come across a female Cokie Franklin right out in the middle of the road. Which is quite unlike Cokie Franklin. They're normally quite a shy little bird that hides really well and none of the Franklins that we see regularly here. We don't always get to have a view like this. It might be because she's on a little bridge crossing a dry riverbed. And I know with the rain now we've been hearing the males call everywhere, so maybe she's come out. To have a look where they are. It's also quite dense here, so she looks a little bit nervous. And in a dry riverbed like this, even though it's really beautiful, it might be full of potential dangers for a small little bird like this. Or maybe it's just trying to dry out, looking for little insects along the ground. Often after the rains, we find that the little beetles and grasshoppers and all kinds of Flying insects move out onto the roads. They're quite active and you find that the birds, especially ground dwelling birds, are out on the edges of the roads like this one is doing now. And I think she might disappear up to the bank if she keeps going where she is. And what a pleasant surprise. Welcome back to the Mara. We've left our lion to sleep. Now, as we're heading back to see the other lions, I've come across this beautiful family. And you can see they're all walking very slowly towards the marsh, a routine that they always perform daily. So elephants have a very good mental mapping skills. And are able and reliant mostly on their matrix because the older individuals who can recall the location and distance for food and water sources that sometimes the last visit especially when they're doing the long distance walk from one habitat area to another so often at times you find that the long distances to find food and water can be very very stressful and you find that with the help of their task these elephants will use that to dig for water but here elephants are very much at peace they're enjoying it very much you can see there's sufficient grass and you see them walking towards the marsh which is a routine that we always see in on a daily basis now right next to this herd these two uh, two young bulls so these two young bulls have come to join and also to, to analyze if some of these females might be in estrus just like humans elephants have traits that can lead to stress or anxiety especially when they have young calves like this so these bulls have their presence not all the females like them being around because sometimes they get to push them over and it's very stressful for the young. Very, very nice to see. So you can tell there's a communication that went in there when they just stop to carry on grazing, which is very nice. So thank you so much for joining us today. 
Join us again soon in the afternoon for our evening safari, Kwaheri. <laughs>